Well, hello and welcome back to the Big Lab Podcast. Today is episode 13 and I'm joined with Grace. How's things with you? Yeah, really good, thank you. How are you? I'm not too bad, thanks. I see uh, you went to get your hair cut today after a, a long time, I imagine. Oh yeah, definitely. I went back and he was just like, how long was it that I last saw you? And I was like, oh, it's been about a year. So That long? Yeah, I mean, but wow. I'm a girl, like you don't need to get haircuts yeah. too, like you guys, like that's true yeah. like to be fair I wouldn't even know how often a girl got the haircut to be to be quite honest to be fair it should be it should be more often than a year but I imagine that yeah <laughs> I'm, in, I'm in desperate need of a haircut like I messaged my barber earlier actually I was like have you had the big rush yet and he was like I'm actually on appointments this week because it's that busy I was like okay I'll come next week then <laughs> like well overdue a haircut at least we'll have like good practice by that point so hopefully you won't miss oh yeah it. yeah hopefully <laughs> I'd be a bit disappointed going back and I could have got a crap trim from my mum again <laughs> I think I've trusted her like three or four times and it's literally taken her about an hour to do my hair and I'm just like this is painful I'll just do it myself I actually got quite good at giving boy haircuts over lockdown like I started off and I was awful and then slowly <laughs> I was like, actually, this is quite like a smooth fade going on. <laughs> a little side hustle going. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so obviously, like things have reopened this week. We've got the gyms back. We've got the pubs back and yeah. shops. And the only one I've only been to the gym so far. I'm going to the pub tomorrow, which I'm kind of looking forward to. Just being in some sort of social setting <laughs> for the first time in like four months. Um, I don't know about you. Have you been out and about yet? Yeah, I mean, I've obviously been to the gym. Like, that's just a given. And that was, I was, I was really nervous actually before I went on the first day, and I, and it really shocked me because I thought, what, like, why am I nervous? It's a gym I've been to before, and I was so excited to go back. Um, and then like just before I went in, I was really nervous. But obviously, the second you step foot in there, you're just like oh, home. <laughs> Yeah, that's it, isn't it? Like, I think, I think quite a lot of people have had a bit of gym anxiety, um, which why I put a post on Instagram before about actually. Um, but yeah, I think a lot of people have been stressing about actually going back because obviously it's been what four months I think since the gym's shut. Yeah, um, yeah, I, yeah I did a post uh, or I did like a story I think saying yeah. that I'm a bit nervous, and I have received so many messages back from people being like either thank you for saying it or oh my gosh I thought I was the only one so I definitely think there's a lot of people who have been nervous about it but then like I then got messages from them after they had actually been and they were like oh it was a lot it was okay it was fine so that made yeah. Me happy. yeah I think a lot of people just build it up in the head to for it to be something a lot worse than it actually is because at the end of the day like you said like most people had been the gym like four months previously and were going back to a gym that they'd already been in before Exactly. and I think for me like I mean I wouldn't say I was nervous about going back I think it was more butterflies of actually getting back in and like getting back into a routine um yeah. but like as soon as I walked through um it was a little bit of a weird feeling I think more the fact that there was just a load of people there <laughs> and um yeah once I got going I was fine I, I actually chose I opted not to put my headphones in because I was just gonna put my headphones in and crack on I thought you know what I've not been here for four months and I just want a bit of atmosphere of like other people. <laughs> I definitely thought that, so I've been working out in my garage for like the past however many months. Yeah. And I normally put my speaker on, I blare the music loud yeah. and definitely have a couple of dance parties in between. <laughs> so I had my music on with my headphones and in between sets, I was like, don't dance, stay still. <laughs> <at all." laughs> I've seen a load of people about, do things like that, like make TikToks and stuff. Saying like um, rest at home, but like compared to rest set like yeah. in the gym, and I was like, that's a valid point to be fair. Like, imagine someone just like breaking out into a dance <laughs> in the middle of the free weight section. Oh my god, that would be funny. I think it should happen. Oh, it would be. Yeah, just even to just catch someone out doing it like without thinking, that would yeah. be the best. But um. What have you actually enjoyed most about going back to the gym this week? Um, oh my gosh, I don't like, 
so there's so many things it's that just... I think it's so to like say. So obviously, like the do you know what the lap pull down? Yeah. I have missed. The That's lap the first down. machine I went on. Yeah, same. <laughs> <laughs> Because everyone, everyone always says to me, like, oh, yeah, you love training glutes. Like, oh, just leg, like, you only do leg days. Back is my favorite, like, really? by far. I love training back. Um, if I could, I would do it, like, three times a week. But That's some um, commitment. <laughs> yeah. So definitely that. And then the cable machines as well. Because, I mean, I've, I have dumbbells and Olympic barbell and bumper plates at home. Yeah, same. So, so it was just kind of like the cables that I was missing the most and like other machines as well. Yeah, I, I I planned on doing like a full cable workout and I got in there and all the cables were taken. I was like, no, I was just going to get on there and just like, you know, swap between all the different attachments and just do a full body like cable session. But uh, they were all full and then I saw the lap pull down. I was like, I'm going. That, I, for it. Yeah, I just went straight to it and then I managed to get on the cable straight after that and I was which was a bit of a blessing. But um, yeah, definitely missed cables. And I think not only just like certain exercise, I think I've just missed like the actual atmosphere of going and definitely. just going and doing like a proper workout. Like I, to be fair, I've got a decent setup at home. Like I was quite lucky. My brother paid for a whole setup. Because <laughs> <laughs> he, he, he doesn't like going to the gym. So he'd rather work out from home. So he was like, I'm just going to spend money and rig the garage up. And I was like, yay. <laughs> I was like, thank you. And to be fair, like I've I've not used it as much as I probably should have because I started doing a lot of running and stuff like that, uh, trying to get ready for football and then obviously messed up my knee, um, <laughs> which is not ideal. But um, yeah, I think just the motivation for working from home just wasn't there um, for 100%. quite a while like even I've and I kind of had a similar situation like over the past three lockdowns I've slowly Mm. accumulated loads of equipment and I remember when I remember in the first lockdown I saw Wolverson said new barbells release now and I literally went straight on it ordered it didn't even look twice at what I was buying I just bought it it. yeah (laughs) And then I've got bumper plates and then I've slowly got like a squat rack and more equipment. So I feel really bad because I feel like I should have used it a lot more, but the motivation and just the determination was just not, not there. It was cold during winter and. Yeah. That second I, one was a tough one when it, it was at the whole of November. Yeah. That was, then, I just couldn't be bothered. Yeah. Same. And I just, I kind of, I really realized that my love for, fitness in the gym and working out was because of an actual gym and being in an actual gym and of course I did love my workouts every so often at home but like nowhere near as much as to when I'm actually in a gym yeah that's that's the thing like once I started doing a workout it'd be a good workout but it's actually Mm -hmm. getting up and going and doing it like I've said it on previous podcasts like why would I want to go from a nice warm house to a freezing cold garage it's yeah. like like if I've got to go somewhere then it's a lot easier like I, I wouldn't even mind if like the gym was freezing if I've got to drive there like I'll get in the car and drive there it's weird I don't know why <laughs> I think it's also the idea of like the routine yeah. because you know that when you're at home you can just you either can just come back inside if you're if you don't want to do it whereas when you actually get in your car you put some good music on have some pre-workout maybe you drive to the gym go get your session done then also number one if you're not feeling it then once you're there you're like well I'm here now so I might as well stay yeah Um, and then also you just have other people around you smashing it smashing their goals and it's just so like motivational I suppose yeah Yeah, that's the thing like I think people almost push you on in the gym without actually doing anything I think it's just the fact that you're there it pushes you on a little bit extra than you probably would at home yeah definitely yeah and even though like the music is crap in like commercial gyms like I've even missed just that (laughs) like literally for a like the I have the same playlist on for about a month in JD and for like a solid month at the same time I was in there every single day I would hear like Cher would come on (laughs) believe and I was just like 
I even missed that. <laughs> like, halfway through like a bench press session and you're listening to Sure. I know. I think in my gym, they've got like a, a radio, like right. a radio station basically for the gym. All right. Or for their chain of gyms. But every so often you then have the music and then it will just be adverts about their <laughs> personal trainers or about their, their gym offers and all of this kind of stuff. And so, yeah, I can't, I just can't listen to it. I have to have headphones. Yeah, I, I can imagine. Like the the most annoying thing for me actually these days are adverts. You know, when you're trying to just watch like a video on Facebook or YouTube and then yeah. it gets to a good bit and they do it purposely because they want you to carry on watching the video and it gets to a good bit in the video and then they put an advert and then you're just like, gonna wait for 30 seconds now. <laughs> and you know you're gonna wait because you wanna know what happens. Exactly. But like it's so frustrating listening to adverts. And it's why I'd never listen to the radio, like ever. Yeah, and I think, in the car. and I think even, and it sounds awful because obviously I use Instagram for my business as well. Yeah. But when I see sponsored posts, it really, I don't know why, it really bugs me. Yeah. So, like when I'm scrolling down my feed, I'll, I usually just like everything, you know, just to like, yeah. and then I'll hit, I hit like a sponsored one. I'm like, nope, unlike. Yeah. <laughs> like I will go back and unlike it. <laughs> <laughs> and it's like, to be fair, it's someone like trying to get out there, usually with like no, a business or something. I'm just like, no. <laughs> yeah, I feel awful about it afterwards. I'm like, what, why would I not support them? Yeah. But I don't know. I guess it's just this whole idea that you you do re- you go online and it's constantly people trying to sell you things. Yeah. And I guess it takes it takes away, I guess, from just enjoying your time online. Yeah, I, I'd agree with that. Um, it's. I think it's just one of the things we've got to deal with more than anything. Um, there's nothing really we can do about it. I mean, I think you can click on them, can't you? Like not interested or something, but I'll be like not interested in just that type of sponsored ad. I think you'll still see other ones. Yeah. And the worst is when your phone listens to you. Like we tested it out in work. Yes. We had like, we had a whole discussion. Like, I can't remember, like on barbecues or something, like we, just to test it. And then next minute we had, we all went on Instagram and we all had sponsored ads for barbecues. I was like, this is creepy. <laughs> like, it's so I weird. I, I was with my friends the other day and we were talking about, I think we were talking about old poly dresses. And then next thing I know, I'm, I go on my phone, have an ad for it. It's so weird. Like, surely that's not right. No, I, I don't know how it works. I don't want to know how it works. I, I want to turn it off. <laughs> But I guess if they gave us the option to turn it off, then everyone would. So True. they just don't give us the option. <laughs> True. So obviously going back into the gym for you, that's not just um, you actually going back to the gym, is it? Do you personal train in a gym as well? So I used to. So okay. before the pandemic, I did one-to-one personal training and I was also a class instructor as well. Um, then... I actually, just before the pandemic happened, I did actually start doing online coaching. So it was maybe like a month or two beforehand, which was amazing timing. Yeah, I was going to say. Yeah. So then I managed to switch all of my clients to online. And then I've slowly been growing it since then. Um, And then I finished university and I used to work at my university gym. So then I've moved back home now. Um. And I don't know, I just haven't really thought about doing one-to-one again. I mean, I really enjoy it yeah. and I, I love it so much, but I can also help so many more people online than that's if I was to just do one-to-one. And that's what really appeals to me about it. Yeah, I think like a lot of people are going that way and like I'm currently doing my PT qualifications. How's it going? I'm on level three at the moment. I just need to do the assessment for level two. Um didn't realize they were open like a couple of weeks back to actually be able to go yeah they opened up earlier for whatever reason but um I think I'm just going to book in level two and three at the same time and just get them done together um but yeah it's going well um but I personally will never work in a gym like I'll be doing on yeah I'll just be going straight online that's really interesting because I actually I'm an accountant like as my day job and so you want it to be like a side hustle kind of thing yeah um i mean i've got plans and ideas to do some sort of like local area boot camp sort of thing 
just like go into a field and get, I don't know, 10, 20 people and do a workout once or twice a week. Um, but yeah, never actually work in a physical gym. And then hopefully get to the point where I can scale it and go full time with it. Yeah, that I mean, that is that's, the, that's, the, <laughs> that's the plan. And then I don't know, live the influencer life, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Like, and that's that's really why I've been trying to push my online coaching recently is because I I do want to go travel. I do want to be able to continue doing my job but not necessarily from the UK. So I guess it just goes hand in hand. Although I do love the one-to-one coaching, I don't think, yeah, I don't think that online coaching can can compare to it just because being there in person, seeing their program, seeing where they started to where they are now, like even with like formal or anything like that, it's so like inspiring and, and great, but but then I guess you also see that online as well. You get to see your clients when they begin and then you give them their help. They go and grind behind the scenes and then they come back to you and they're like, look at me now. And it's amazing. Yeah. All, like progress photos and things like that. Are there. Yeah. Okay. Um, but what are the plans for you then? Like, have you got any ideas of where you want to go traveling in particular? Um, well, kind of. So I was supposed to move to Bali uh, for six months um that was in September um and then now I I don't know I think the plan is to still go to Bali um but maybe also some other places as well obviously you need to see about restrictions and when everything opens up yeah um, but the plan is definitely to get out of the UK as soon as possible and go see the world I think a lot of people are gonna have the same yeah. Quick idea. <laughs> I think airports are going to be absolutely rammed once they're uh, properly open again, and it's going to be a genuine nightmare. I think to actually get out of the UK for a good yeah. few months. Probably. Um, so, so what you're saying, like, sort of, have Bali as like maybe a base, and then sort of yeah. go to other places from Bali. Like, yeah. Of, so uh, I mean, I somewhat. I mean, it was very loose plans, but I somewhat had kind of planned it out. How, I, how it was going to work when I did move there. So the idea was that I was going to have Changu as the base um, and then travel around Bali like every so often so that I could always come back to Changu and then go off to the Gili Islands and just have a look around and explore, yeah. I guess, while also doing my job and then just enjoying myself. Um, Been over there before as well, haven't you? Yeah, yeah, I went two years ago. Um, and I was I was only there for about two and a half weeks. Oh but... <laughs> that's awful, isn't it? <laughs> I mean, for travelling, I feel like it's that's not very long. Yeah. But um, it's a long it holiday. Was, yeah, it was the best two and a half weeks of my life, probably okay. ever. I went with my two best friends, and it was it was just so much fun, so amazing. And I just completely fell in love with Bali, and I literally was like, I, I have to come back here. Yeah. So that's that's the plan you have <laughs> to get like- yourself a youtube channel to go with it as well i was just about to say I, it's so cliche and i hate i hate that <laughs> but here Why we are not? i'm gonna have to become a travel influencer or something <laughs> you know the thing is if you think about it as well like imagine in years to come when you have like maybe kids or whatever and you can just say like look well, this is what i did when i was like 23 24 yeah and how cool would that be to be able to turn around and be like this was my life like if like if I can do this you can do anything when you're older this is your mum look I'm cool yeah exactly (laughs) (laughs) yeah um no I don't think there's any issue with making a YouTube channel if you go and travel in um yeah I think uh, with me I just don't I I'm a very creative person but not with technology Right. So, I don't know how to edit filming angles any of that kind of stuff and you can tell from my Instagram as well um yeah I'm not the best with editing whatsoever so I think say I- you were that bad I, I say it's, it's, not, it's not as bad as you're making it out to me like <laughs> the videos are pretty good but Thank um you. I think I mean- it it's definitely something that you learn doing, I think. Oh, yeah. Definitely. I don't think you can, like, go on a course and find out. I think you've just got to learn what's right because everyone's different at the end of the day. Everyone has their own style. Like, mm-hmm. 
the issue I have is in my head, I've got ideas and then I can't put them into a video. That's basically. <laughs> like, I'm like, how oh, cool if I could do this. Yeah. And, then, and then I go to actually do it and I'm like, wait a second, like, how do they do that? <laughs> I don't know. Well, my issue is like, I need someone else to be filming it for me to get the like angles yeah. and transitions yeah. that I want. Like, I can't do it on my own. And like, every now and again, I get my brother to do some stuff because like, he's kind of creative like I'm probably the least creative one out of the th- four of us like I've got three younger brothers I'm the yeah. only one that doesn't play a musical instrument <laughs> really yeah I just lift weights and play football <laughs> <laughs> go to the pub um but yeah like in my head I've got ideas for videos and it's just like just I don't know how to get them into an actual video and edited but I'll get there. Like to be fair, yeah. if you if you look back on my Instagram, like there's about eight hundred posts on there now. But if you scroll all the way to the bottom, <laughs> there is some bad content. I've to, yeah, I've had to archive a lot of. Things. I've just left them for a laugh. To be fair. <laughs> yeah, there's some of the stuff that was originally posted, and I've I mean I've had my Instagram account since like 2016, 2017, and my my plan was never to to like use it for a business or anything it was literally just there for me to post my own progress my yeah. my own like just put my own passion into something um and yet somehow then I randomly decided to become a personal trainer when I was at uni and it was it was mainly just because I found that I was helping my friends anyway in the gym and I was I was basically personal training them but I just didn't have the qualification I've had that as well my, yeah. my, mate, my mate used to call me PT no qual. <laughs> <laughs> and then I was like, I might as well get a qualification and then I can do yeah. this alongside uni. And the whole time I was at uni, I pretty much said to everyone, they were like, oh, so you're going to like PT afterwards? I was like, no, no way, definitely not. And then I was like, wait a second, I actually really love this and I really enjoyed <laughs> it. I'm, I'm not that bad at it, so I might as well. Yeah, exactly, like... You're just going to take things as they come sometimes, haven't you? And like, if you find a love and a passion for it, then why not pursue it? Yeah. I mean, there's definitely the whole, like, like me and my friends always joke being like, gym is my personality because it it just is. And I'm like, when gym shut, I was like, I've lost my personality. It's gone. <laughs> oh, I was so moody when the gym shut. So like when they first shut last March, that was the day before my birthday. No. Yeah. <sighs> And I was just like, I was so moody on my birthday, <laughs> like so moody. Um, but yeah, it's one of them, isn't it? And then yeah, the gyms reopened the day after my birthday, and I was like, I just wanted to do like a back session on my birthday. <laughs> I remember you messaging me as well, saying that you might be a bit hungover <laughs> going to the gym on Monday. Yeah. <laughs> How was it? Was yeah. it? It wasn't too bad. It wasn't as bad as I thought. But it was I wasn't I wasn't top notch. Let's just say that. You gotta enjoy yourself every now and again though, haven't you? Especially for your birthday. Yeah. I mean I'm I'm starting with a new coach in a couple of weeks' time. Okay. And we were kind of like we weren't sure whether I was going to start on the nineteenth or the twenty sixth, but I'm going out for my birthday, more celebrations on the eighteenth. <laughs> So I messaged him and I was like, maybe we should start on the yeah. instead. <laughs> so I was like, I don't think it's a good idea. Perhaps best. Day after I go out. <laughs> yeah, it's probably not the best idea. <laughs> probably not the best start either to a new program. <laughs> it, it's interesting you say that. Like, I've never actually had a coach or a PT, like, ever. I, I haven't either until, until well, in a couple of weeks' time will be my first time. Oh, it'll be your first one? Yeah, which so is really exciting. What are the goals with that then? Um, well, so I think what I tend to do is with my clients, I have a really like, like, I kind of know what I'm doing and where we're heading with, with their plan. Yeah. When it comes to myself, I, all my knowledge just decides to go out the window and I just go, Oh, I'll try this. And then maybe I'll try this. And, and I get overexcited and I'll be like oh I really love this exercise so I'm going to do a lot of that or I really hate this exercise so I'm not going to do that and I'm not very hard on myself I guess right. like I set myself off quite a lot so I really wanted a coach for accountability and also 
to streamline the progress i, I suppose on the process yeah. um to be like grace this is what we're doing this is the plan now go home and do it kind of thing um so the our initial goals are to get my physique back to pre-covid but better i could do um, with that <laughs> yeah and then get my strength back to what it was pre-covid but also better because i built up like a, a fair amount of strength yeah. uh, before the lockdown i was the strongest i had ever been and then the lockdown happened and now trying to like deadlift and stuff i just i just get sad because i'm so weak <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I think the only thing I've probably struggled with is uh, legs. I'm whilst being in lockdown because I've I've had sort of the tools to be able to do upper body. Yeah. Um, it's only recently since my brother kitted out the garage that I've been able to do like any sort of legs, and that's been since I've uh, been training to like get fit for football again. So I basically started running twice a week. And what I found previously is I used to do, I used to find it really hard to fit legs into a, a like a training plan each week. So I played football twice a week. Yeah. So I'd always be like aching a little bit coming into training or coming into a game. And I felt that that was why every now and again, I'd pull my hamstring. Mm-hmm. So what I decided to do, I started running twice a week and I just didn't do any legs. Cause I was like, I'm going to end up just goosing myself because I haven't ran for like four months or whatever it was. I haven't ran for ages. So I was like, I'm going to just have to give myself as much rest as I can get. And it's so sad because you you try to do running to prepare yourself for yeah. football and then you still injured yourself. Yeah, not a muscle injury though. A bit worse, it was many. <laughs> but um, yeah, it's just one of them. It happened and I've just got to deal with it and crack on. Um Good news yesterday is that I'm not going down the surgical route just yet. Um, getting rehab and physio. So hopefully that can sort me out because I definitely don't want to be on crutches and learn how to walk for the nine months afterwards. Oh it would be like a whole nother pandemic on top oh, of the last It would one. be the worst thing. But uh, to be fair, I'd already mentally prepared myself for it. But as soon as the physio said yesterday, he was like, uh, yeah, I'm prepared to put you down the... Uh, rehab route I was like thank god (laughs) I'd been stressing out like all day like I'd had like butterflies all day yesterday and I was just like I'm not looking forward to this consultation Mm -hmm. and then I came out of it and I felt so light (laughs) I can imagine like a huge weight oh yeah literally like I was just like I got in the car and I just was like yes (laughs) (laughs) but um yeah it's just one of them um but like I said I think a lot of people probably have struggled for legs at home. I think it's a lot easier to sort of work your upper body, especially like if you've just got a barbell, then you can do so much for upper body and a bench exactly. where it's for a lot a while, harder. Yeah. For a while, I just had the long resistance bands, you know, <sighs> the one you- yeah, <laughs> I don't want to see a resistance band ever again, to be honest. Honestly. <laughs> so when, when I had those, that was so much easier to train upper body. And then, yeah with my barbell and stuff until I had the squat rack I mean I could do like hip thrusts and I could do deadlifts and lunges kind of thing but yeah I think the squat rack was the game changer for it all really yeah I can imagine like the the thing is as well we've had that um squat and bench rack in ours only since I started doing the running and I've not done a single squat on it um (laughs) Yeah, but like the first lockdown, all I had, like the heaviest weights we had was a, a set of 20 kilo dumbbells from like our next door neighbour. And I don't really? know if he's expecting to get them back because he's we've still got them. Like it's over a year we've had them now. <laughs> um, so yeah, it's one of them. But like, uh, will you still be doing any home workouts or are you solidly in the gym now? Because I've seen a few people that are going to mix it up still and I was like, what, really? <laughs> yeah no <laughs> and I feel awful saying that because once again I have I have the setup yeah. to do them and like I've, I've said to myself like if there was ever a day where I was insanely busy and I just didn't have the time because my gym's about like a 20 minute half an hour drive away so it adds like a good extra hour on top of my session to do yeah. go to the gym um but I just can't see myself training at home which is awful um no it's 
the gym is just the gym for me like I'm the same better. I think like you said like unless I'm like stupidly busy mm. then I mean I've got to be stupidly busy like ridiculously busy to even bother going in ours because my gym's like at tops a 10 minute drive away oh really yeah so I've got to be like mega busy not to be able to get to the gym to yeah. then have to do a quick workout in the garage the only time I may use it is if I'm doing like one of my how-to videos for form yeah, that's actually a good idea and I have actually thought about that because yeah I I invested not really invested it was from Amazon very cheap in a tripod over the lockdown just yeah. to kind of film my home workouts um and I told myself that when gyms reopen, I, I'm i going to be that person. It's <laughs> so hard to do. Um, I haven't got the courage for that yet. Soon, I know. Maybe. We'll see. To be fair, the only time... When did I take my job? I, I did take it in a couple of times, and it was only when the gym was dead. Yeah. Like, the first lockdown, I took it in a f- about four or five times like the week before the gym shut you know when everyone was flapping it about covid and stuff and they just didn't go anywhere i was like i'm still going to the gym they're open um <laughs> and then i think it was just before christmas i might have took it in a couple of times then as well mm-hmm. and i don't know why i had like a ridiculous amount of confidence apparently at that time because it, like the gym was still reasonably busy and i'm there like just, like pulling all the legs out and like standing yeah. up and getting the angles and stuff but um I then invested in, you know, those is it a gorilla pod. Oh yeah, the ones that like grip onto something. Yeah, but then you get people looking at you like, "What are you doing?" Because you're trying to struggle to like wrap it around something, <laughs> and it just starts falling, and you're just like, "I give up." So like, and in between, like just before the most recent lockdown, I saw a girl in my gym, and she had like a full blown, like a big tripod with the legs and everything like she was probably like getting her angles and stuff and I just looked at her and I was like oh my gosh like you've got so much courage you go girl like I need to get that confidence I was like the thing is it's not even that like big of a deal is it like people looking in interest most of the time yeah exactly like I like I looked I was like that's sick and then the rest of my workout and so I'm like if I've got that mentality then surely everyone else would hopefully what I, I usually find helps is you put earphones in and just block everything out. Mm, definitely. And then it, you almost don't see people looking at you. But um, I'm going tomorrow to a gym with one of my protein girls to do a workout vlog. Oh, yeah, you said. And I was like, this is, this is going to be potentially really awkward because um, the gym I go to, I was like, I'm definitely not vlogging in there. Like, I know too many people in there that go personally. And yeah. quite a few people in there now follow me on Instagram. I'm oh, just really? like, I'm not prepared to be <laughs> vlogging in the middle of that gym. Like, I can literally, I think I went in there yesterday and there's like at least probably 10 or 15 people you at least recognise. Never mind, like, no, like, just recognising them. I'm just like, no, I'm not I'm not prepared for that. <laughs> so I was like, we're going to a different gym. <laughs> um, I definitely yeah. think that you should do the exercise that I suggested, like, 100%. Which one was it again? It was the... Um, Lateral raises, but you do that, a hole on one side while yeah. doing 10 on the other, and then you swap to the other side. Then you do nine, eight, seven, you go down to one. So... It, for, um, so. <laughs> I can imagine. So, like, for people listening, basically what we're doing is we're allowing our, our followers to decide what our workout's going to be, and then we're going to be putting the sets and reps into, like, a random number generator to decide how many we do. And I've actually had three different lateral raise exercises okay. like yeah because like that was that's why I asked like which one was it because I'd, I've had like yeah. three of them <laughs> they're all horrible <laughs> like one of them was starting at 10 reps mm-hmm. um you do 10 reps then drop your weight down to nine all the way down to one I was like surely that's a lot of dumbbells like there's surely not enough dumbbells to be able to do it unless you've got singles going from like 10 to one yeah, no, that no, that sounds horrible. Then I remember an... doing my PT course. They were trying to teach us about um, like the lactic acid system. So they they said so you had to do like forty lateral raises. Then I think it was something like a thirty second rest, and then you had to repeat it like four more times to wow. like feel. They were like, so we want to like teach you like the burn, like so you can feel the lactic acid and stuff. 
Jesus was, Christ. I'll just yeah. tell them, if, I'll be like, no. <laughs> <laughs> I know what like the cost is. It's like I've played sports and been to the gym for like... <laughs> Yeah, none of that. There was another one that someone sent me. It was like, I think it was like 10 partial lateral raises, Mm -hmm. then 10 like half lateral raises, then 10 full lateral raises. I was like, are people trying to kill us? Like, I I know it's like YouTube's meant to be entertaining and stuff, but there's (laughs) things that are just like painful. I know the first thing I thought when because it because you said only uh, um upper body workouts because of your knee so the first thing i thought was what's the most painful upper body <sighs> exercise that i know of and i'm going to suggest yeah. that it's just directly <laughs> against gravity isn't it that's why <laughs> <laughs> it's horrible <laughs> so where are we up to i'm just looking at my notes <laughs> I think we'll go back to gym anxiety like we we touched on it briefly to begin with and I think we've covered it like slightly as well and I think um one of them that people struggle with is like we were saying just then was about people staring at people in the gym and I covered this on the video I posted today and I basically said like most of the time it is just people blanking out during like a rest between a set and unless you're doing something absolutely ridiculous then that is probably the reason they're looking at you obviously there's some weirdos that will literally stare at people but i mean it's a very small minority yeah. to the people that are just sat there on a bench just monged out <laughs> listening to music in between a, a set exactly i think quite a lot of the time especially if i've just done like a really heavy set or something yeah. i'll kind of like sit there and i'll look out I'll completely blank out and then i'll realize that oh my gosh i'm either looking at someone or i'm just staring at the yeah. ground um so number one hopefully that happens a lot um but also if someone is just staring at you then you can either do the tactic which is my personal favorite of just stare back at them (laughs) (laughs) um (laughs) I feel like that's just the best best solution to the problem yeah, then you'll definitely find out whether they're staring at you or they're just like zoned out. Because <laughs> if they're zoned out, they'll just carry on. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, and just put your headphones in. Get like, if you've got your plan, like at least you know, okay, I'm going from this machine to this to yeah. this. And just try and focus on yourself because I can guarantee that like 99% of the people in there are just focus- focusing on themselves. And they really are just in there trying to better themselves and not in there trying to like pick apart what you're doing. Yeah. No, um, as well, like I think going with someone with a similar goal, like a a friend or like you may even be able to find someone on Instagram these days. Like all you have to do is like search the like location for the gym that you're at. That's so true. And um Obviously, if you're struggling to find any of the machines, I said on the video before, obviously quite a lot of these gyms now have social media pages. Like you can just go on them and have a look at the posts that they've put to sort of get a rough idea of where things are. And quite often as well on websites, they either have a floor plan or they'll have a video literally showing you round like a virtual floor plan where you can literally go around the gym. Exactly. So there's definitely ways about doing it. but, But like you said, like quite like pretty much everyone in there is just trying to better themselves more than anything yeah definitely and especially I find that generally the people that are kind of the most intimidating are like the proper gym goers yeah and out of everyone they're the ones who are there for themselves who don't care what anyone else is doing but themselves um and I feel like those are generally the most intimidating people for, for other people at the gym so I, I reckon that. they're also the most paranoid. Oh, like, really? Yeah, because they're all about them and how, quite often how other people are seeing them as well. Mm. So, like, they may come off, like, intimidating, but quite a lot, I reckon, people are worried about, again, what people are thinking of them because they are the big gym-goer people. Yeah, that's so true. And I think, and that's thing, it's completely, like, human nature to to be anxious and worry about, other people's perceptions of you um so yeah I do feel like with time as you get more confident with what you're doing in the gym you do just start to kind of either push it to a side or you just 
stop caring. Yeah. Well, I think that's it. Like, if these people don't have an impact on your life, I don't think you should be too worried about what they're thinking in the first place. Oh, yeah, definitely. And if you are a newbie to the gym, like if, uh, or even if it's like the first gym, like if you're moving to a new gym, everyone's been in that position at some point in that gym. Like everyone's been a newbie at some point. So people are just further along, I hate to say it, but further along the journey. Mm -hmm. You've just got to crack on, I think. Yeah, I was voice noting one of my clients today and she was saying like it's so intimidating like there's people everywhere like what if I'm doing my exercises wrong and I and she was saying like they just like everyone just seems so experienced and I said you've got to remember everyone started where you're at or even actually probably before where she's at and I said I definitely did I said when I first started going to the gym I had all the time I I barely knew what I was doing and I was just trying to get by and the best way to better yourself and to get more confident unfortunately is to just do it yeah to just turn up every day and try and do a little bit more than you did the day before um and try to just improve whatever you're doing a little bit compared to what you did last time and that's just the best way that you're going to see progression with both like feeling anxious about it but also progression in the gym and like 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 you said, like just doing it is going to make you better. But like I found when I was younger, when I wanted to try like a new exercise, mm. I'd just Google a video. Like everything's out there these days. It's so easy to find. Like my mom actually joined my, the same gym I'm at. She's not, she's not been yet. And she's like, what if I don't know where everything is? I was like, I'm going to have to write you a floor plan, aren't I? Like number them. And um, <clears throat> she said, but yeah, but what if I don't know how to use the machines? And I was like, there's literally instructions like there's a sticker instruction of how to use it and quite often now you'll find there's a barcode that you can scan and it'll show you how to use it like I've noticed that in a few gyms yeah so but also, there's at least in my gym there's personal trainers everywhere like just walking around and you can say to them or if they're not personal trainers they're at least fitness instructors and you can kind of say to them I like I want to do a tricep extension can you show me how to do it on the cable machines? And they, um, to be honest, they're probably like, that's going to be the highlight of their day, helping you do that. Yeah, it's usually cleaning up weights and stuff, isn't it? Exactly. Instead of like sanitizing everything, it, they're going to be like, yes, let, like, let me help you. Yeah, exactly. It's what they're there for at the end of the day. And mm-hmm. quite often you can just walk into a gym and ask for an induction and they'll show you around and they'll ask like, what sort of stuff is it that you're interested in? And they'll literally give you a tutorial of, anything you want exactly and yeah that's the thing is if you if you pre-plan it all even if like get your phone out on your notes write down like five to six exercises that you want to do for that session right even if it's just like three times ten for the exercises and then just look them up in advance and even if it is something like a squat you can kind of practice it at home in body weight and then you know okay Maybe I'll start off by adding a dumbbell instead of a barbell and then slowly build it up. But you can prepare so much at home so that when you go to the gym, it doesn't seem as daunting. I think what you said there is always important about the three times 10. Um, I think a lot of people try to overcomplicate the rep ranges. And I think for the average person or at least like a newbie, three times 10 is more than good enough. Like quite often I'll stick to three times 10 or four or five times 10 rep ranges isn't going to make a massive difference and well obviously it can like if you go to like the bottom of the rep range and the top of the rep range there's a big difference but (laughs) three times ten is like a sweet spot like between eight and twelve is good enough for any new like new starter because it's not going to be too heavy that your form's going to go rubbish and it's not too many that you're going to just burn out all the time exactly and I have lots of clients saying to me okay that's fine like let's say that their program is three times ten they go okay that's fine um, so what weight should I start on? And it's like the rep range is literally there and that and that will tell you what weight you need to be lifting. So I say, if you do the exercise and you can only do six reps on whatever weight you pick, Stop then you again. know you need to go down in weight. If you can do like 15, then you know, actually I can go up in weight a little bit. You want to just be trying to do, if the rep range is 10, you want to maybe 
maybe you could be able to do 11 reps yeah. but you're going to stick to the 10 so it's not complete failure yeah you never want to go to failure I don't think in general I, I don't think I've really ever hit like complete failure it's just it's a bit risky as well yeah depending on what exercise you're doing like if you're on complete failure all the time you're just attacking your central nervous system for starters mm-hmm. and you're just increasing the chance of injury like every single rep that you do and yeah I haven't done a one rep max since November of 2020 20, sorry 2019 so I did one about three weeks ago was it your bench yeah I just I, I was feeling like I wasn't even planning on doing it and I was just feeling that good because like my usual bench routine is like 10, 8, 6, 4, 2. And then I'll just do a back off set of 10. And I got to four and I was like, that felt far too easy for four. It was like my usual weight. I was like, you know what? I'm just going to see where it's at. Because I, I hadn't done a one rep for about two years before mm. that. I, mean, I just wasn't interested. And I thought, you know what? This is feeling pretty good. I'm just going to go for it. And I just, <laughs> I think I... Yeah, I, I I went straight into a single after the four of 130, which was my original PB. These aren't even that impressive weights either for someone of like my size and height and everything. But then I just thought, you know what, I'm whacking five kilos on it and just hit a 135. <laughs> and it was and fine. It's sometimes you do have those strong days and you're like, yeah. you know what, I'm going to push it. And, and you know as well, full well, that, okay, unless you're a power lifter, doing a one rep max isn't going to get you very much benefits but it makes you like so <laughs> oh, yeah. and strong and confident yeah i've actually got a video uh, saved that i need to edit actually that's all about one rep maxes and them just not being worth it unless you're a power lifter <laughs> so yeah that'll be out probably around the time this podcast comes out actually on monday um but yeah they're just the risk is just not worth it for the reward. Like you feel good for like what a couple of minutes after you've done it, but after that, it's not. Whereas the potential injury, like you only have to look on Instagram. That what's that lad that tore his pec the other week? I can't remember his name. <laughs> have you not seen the video? No. Oh, I'll send it. You have to this. It's horrible. Like spot fail kind of pages. No. Because I like um, it's Instagram pages that are completely like for fail. Oh list. yeah, it's horrible. I, I yeah, watch like you've got some of them, you just cringe. No, it was this fella. Um, he was working out with Larry Wheels in Dubai. He was on like a incline press for, I think he was, I think he was doing a one rep, and literally like his whole pec like tore. You, you see it just like shift across his chest. So like, yeah. the risk of like the reward of actually hitting that weight versus the risk of potentially being out for I don't know. He's probably going to be out for like six months, like before he at yeah. least. Um. It's just not worth it. And I think people just need to leave their egos at the door when they go into the oh, gym. Like, yeah. And I quite... think... Oh, sorry. Go on. <laughs> no, I was just going to say, I think people also forget what their actual goals are in the gym. So if, if your goals are physique goals, if your goals are to build muscle, then a one rep max is not the most efficient way to do that. No. Like what I was going to say was quite often you find it's young lads trying to impress each other and like they just keep adding more weight on and you see the form just like getting worse and worse and worse. And I'm just like, something's going to happen. <laughs> and like quite often, like, I'm lucky to have not seen it to be fair, like happen or like I'm lucky. Well, the per- the people who I've seen do it are lucky not to have been injured. I think it's probably yeah. the better way of saying it. But uh, yeah, it's just, people just need to, like you say, realize what the goal is and then sort of work around that instead of trying to impress your mates or trying to get a couple of hundred likes on Instagram it's just Mm -hmm. genuinely not worth it and that's the thing is I feel like quite a lot of the time as well people will be like oh the heavier weights you lift the better and of course to a certain extent that is the case but you need to have good form with it good form is so more important so much more important than having um than lifting a heavy weight because if you can't feel it if you're not doing it correctly it's not going to hit the right muscles anyway that's what i've said like from day one on my account like form overweight and like i'm a reasonably big person and i'll probably never be lifting the heaviest weights in the gym like there'll be someone there but i can guarantee that my form's probably better than mm-hmm. whoever's lifting heavier anyway it's probably also that they don't have such long limbs like you <laughs> 
that, that's <laughs> such a disadvantage. It's so annoying. Like, like I've got a mate uh, who's like five foot eight, and he'll go in the gym and like we'll do a bench press session. He's like, "Oh, you're struggling with that." I'm like, "Look how much longer my limbs are." Like, over a bench press, every set, like every rep, is probably about a foot difference. Like, I reckon my arms are at least six inches longer than his. So, like up and down, that's a whole foot, like yeah. every single rep. So it only takes a couple of reps for me to have done like one more rep than he has on the same amount of reps. Yeah, I, speaking about this, then I really should be a lot stronger than I am because I'm, sort I'm, out, Grace. I'm, 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 I'm literally, I'm so short. <laughs> You're only five two. Yeah, I'm tiny. <laughs> wow. I didn't realize you were that short. This is what I've said on a previous podcast. It is so hard to tell how tall people are on Instagram. Yeah, I know. It's so strange, isn't it? Because some people, you look at them and you're like, whoa, you're like really tall. Yeah. Then you meet them in person and you're like... You're really uh, not. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, like, I always have the issue of like trying to fit in the actual box on Instagram. <laughs> That's my issue. <laughs> Which... You're going to have to do all of the, like, you're going to have to stretch the post out a little bit longer so they're the rectangle ones instead of yeah. the square. Yeah, but then the thing is, I'm like, I always want it to look decent, you know, like in the grid yeah of course so I'm just like trying, I always have to play around with it and then like for a test I look in you know like my camera roll where it's all yeah. the squares like the grid layout and I'm like I don't quite fit in I'm gonna have to adjust it again <laughs> but um, at that point you're like so what do I cut off like do I cut off the top part of my hair or do I cut off my feet exactly. like it's so annoying but um yeah I've had a few people like uh who I've met and they've said oh you're so much bigger like taller in real life and I'm like I have literally put my height in my bio, like, so people know. Like, surely you knew I was tall anyway. How tall are you? 6'4". Bloody hell. So we're at two completely opposite ends of the spectrum. <laughs> and that's thing, if if the meetup thing happens, I would yeah. know this. <laughs> All right. Well, as I was speaking to someone about this today, actually, um, as soon as everything opens up properly, I'm going to get back on it and organise it. Um, yeah, for those listening, uh, basically last year I organised a big meetup. There was going to be, I think it was nearly 40 of us meeting up in London to do like a workout, get some content and then just go out on the piss, basically. Um, <laughs> but uh I organized it for the weekend after well, the weekend. Yeah. The weekend after everything shut. So I think everything shut on like the 24th and we were meant yeah. to go down to London on like the 29th. And honestly, the amount of time it took me to actually organize that event, I had a spreadsheet and everything. There was like color coding. There you was work as well. Didn't you? What was that? You got accommodation too, didn't you? Yeah, I. so basically what happened was I got all the people, then asked them all, like I had to find one date where the most people could go. And then yeah. I basically had to be dead sly and cut people out. And I was like, I've got to accommodate for the most people at the end of the day. Um, mm-hmm. And then I narrowed it down again to who needed accommodation, who didn't. I even put follow account on at one point. I was just like interested how many like cumulative followers we had that were going to be turning on. <laughs> That was a bit sad and took me a while. But yeah, I had a separate spreadsheet for accommodation. It was all sorted. I'd had, I sorted a gym out, like a special rate for the gym. <laughs> sorted out a place for us to eat and drink. And then I think I sorted out, I was in the process of sorting out like a nightclub or something to go to afterwards, like with a couple of booths. Yeah, and then something like Pagola on the roof or like a rooftop bar kind of vibe. Yeah, you know? it was going to be class. And then I literally just... Oh, I was so gutted when lockdown came. <laughs> but yeah, as soon as everything opens back up, it's going to be back on. And I'm sure there's probably going to be even more people that want to get on it because they, so okay. other people had heard about it. And then we're like, <laughs> I want to be a part of this. I was like, Christ. <laughs> and obviously, like over the past year, I've met more people through Instagram. And <laughs> I'm assuming they're going to want to come as well. And it's just, it'll be worth it, I hope. I just hope I can find somewhere big enough um but yeah you have to end up just hiring out a whole gym that's potentially what it might actually have to get like I I was gonna do that at one point um the issue was we had too many people for this gym it was too small really (laughs) yeah for firing 
like health and safety rules. So I think it only allowed like 20 and I messaged them. I was like, we've got 35. And they were like, yeah, we can't because of like health and safety. I was like, shit. <laughs> so then I had to, I think it was a gym box that we were going to go to. Yeah. That's yeah, a big one. Sorry. Yeah. But yeah, I'll, I'll sort it out again. Don't worry. <laughs> But um, before we wrap up the podcast, do you have any sort of final tips for newbies or just people going back to the gym in general? I think we've covered um, quite a lot. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I would definitely say get prepared. So have like get a bag ready, put everything you need in it, such as like water, headphones. If you're doing like a leg day, maybe like resistance bands, just anything that you feel like you might need. And also take more than you think you're going to need. So for example, like I have a barbell pad, I've got lifting straps, just stuff like that. And I don't use them all the time, but yeah. at least if they're there, then you have the option. Then definitely I'd say the most important part is get a plan. So that doesn't necessarily mean you have to get one from a like a coach or anything, but even just writing it down so that before you go in there, you know exactly what you're going to do. That's really helpful. Um, I would say warm up and cool down as well and stretch. Yeah, there's not a lot of that going on at the moment. No, and it's I've noticed. <laughs> I feel like I'm the only one who warms up. <laughs> I'm just like looking around, like people just go straight into lifting. I'm like, fair play. Yeah, I know my body couldn't handle that. <laughs> yeah. And then, yeah, I'd also say so, have you heard of reps in reserve? Oh, yeah. yeah. So, for anyone who doesn't know what reps in reserve means, it's basically um, kind of the reps that you have left over until failure. So I would say you want to be hitting like reps in reserve, like three or four. So um, that means that if you're doing an exercise, um, lifting certain weight for 10 reps, you could actually do 14 reps. Yeah. Uh, you're only going to do it for 10 reps so that you don't completely fatigue your muscles and they aren't going to be completely broken after your session. <laughs> and then you can obviously over time slowly decrease the reps in reserve so that you are hitting closer to failure and kind of targeting the muscles a little bit more with the weight. Yeah, I'd say probably those would be the best tips. And also no. take a buddy if you have a, yeah. a training buddy as well. I think that's really helpful and helps with confidence too. I'm just going to add something in because I've noticed that already over Instagram people aching loads because they've gone back into the gym trying to lift the weights yeah. that they were lifting four months ago it's like yeah. i put on an instagram post the other day if you'd been off like the ale for four months you're gonna take it easy aren't you on that first night out like you're not gonna go try and drink everything that you were drinking this is me i until <laughs> until the other day i had not had a drop of alcohol in 2021 until april i wish i could say the same <laughs> <laughs> Moving on, this is a fitness podcast, everyone. Um, <laughs> but yeah, uh, basically, if you've still yet to go back to the gym or you've been a bit of a divvy and you've gone back in and tried to lift the weight you were previously and now you're really sore, um, again, just leave your ego at the door, lift lighter weights. Take advantage as well of lifting lighter weights to so improve your form because then by the time that you lift, you are able to lift those weights again, you'll probably have better form doing it and you're less likely to get injured. Yeah, and um, mind to muscle connection as well like that's one of the best ways to actually target the muscles to feel the muscles working and make sure as well it kind of tells you if your form is correct because if you're yeah. feeling an exercise where it's not the muscle that you're targeting then you're doing something wrong quite often it's your lower back as well <laughs> your lower back will tell you anytime you are doing an exercise wrong um out oh, rest days as well make sure you take them I know like it, it's been dead tempting for me to just go every single day and today I've had a rest day because well tomorrow I'm potentially doing a brutal workout for YouTube because <laughs> people are <laughs> giving me stupid exercises <laughs> um, but yeah take your rest days if anything I'd be taking more than you were previously um just to give yourself that extra time last thing you want to do is go back into the gym and get injured straight away Mm -hmm. just like me going back to football and <laughs> getting injured straight away but exactly. that wasn't because I was lifting <laughs> the same weights as previously I just landed awkwardly okay. and that's the thing like you can build you can build on your plan so yeah. start off really small even if potentially it's 
it's not as much as you think you need to be doing because in your next session, okay, you'd be like, okay, my body was okay with that. I can add more. The last thing you want to do is do a, a session and then it completely wipes you out for like a week and a half because that's not going to benefit your progress at all. If anything, it's going to push you further back. So take rest your time. Is, rest is just important, isn't it? Yeah. I was actually yeah. working out. But I think that wraps everything up before we do like basically a double podcast. <laughs> I think there's like so much more we can speak about and I'll definitely have to have you back on again. Yeah, it's be been great. a really good chat and I think we've provided a lot of value. Um, and I hope I hope there's still people listening right now. Um, and if you are, let us know. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, yeah, if you have got this far in the podcast, uh, Thank you very much for listening. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, make sure you drop it a like. And if you're new, subscribe. And we will see you in the next one. Yeah, thank you so much. <laughs>